Hello guys, my name is Trevor Steele with Backcountry PPG. I'm an instructor at a school in Salt Lake City, Utah, and in today's video, I wanna talk about wind. More specifically, how much wind can a paramotor really handle? There are a few parts to this question that I wanna answer. Firstly, is how much wind can the aircraft handle at max capacity? And secondly, is how much wind is safe for this aircraft to handle? So we'll start with the first one. To figure out how much wind this paramotor or a paramotor can handle, we must first figure out how fast they fly. Generally speaking, a paramotor is gonna cruise somewhere around 28 to 32 miles an hour in your normal neutral configuration. Fully accelerated, you'll cruise somewhere between 40 and 52 or so miles an hour. So those are kind of your max ranges. Now there's no way you can handle 52 miles an hour of wind because that's gonna be pushing you backwards. Hypothetically, you could handle, if your wind goes 32, 32 miles an hour of wind. But by no means is 32 miles an hour of wind safe. So now, what is safe for a paramotor to handle? I have cutoffs, and these are cutoffs that we teach our students at our training class, and I make it a big priority that the students know this information. Our cutoffs are the following. Six miles an hour in the mountains, meaning if the wind is blowing seven miles an hour, you're over the cutoff. Eight miles an hour in the flatlands, meaning if the wind is blowing nine, you're over the cutoff. And 10 miles an hour on the beach, meaning if it's blowing 11, you're over the cutoff. Now, the reason that they change and they're not consistent is because it depends on your environment as to how smooth the wind is going to be. See, if you're in the mountains and the wind is blowing 10 miles an hour, that wind is having to go up and down and swirl and twirl all around these mountains and then need time to smoothen out before it reaches you. Think about a rock in a stream. If the stream is going very fast, it takes a while for that water to smoothen out downstream. If the stream is going much slower, that, sh that will take a lot less time. Meaning, if the wind is six miles an hour in the mountains and you are in the mountains, by the time it reaches you, the chances of it being smooth is much greater. Now, the reason we want smooth is because as the air gets more and more turbulent, it becomes less and less safe for us as pilots. So I draw that line at six miles an hour in the mountains. Why? Because as a new paramotor pilot, if the wind is eight miles an hour and at all turbulent, which is bound to happen in that much wind, it could be unsafe for you to handle. Now that does not mean that you cannot handle it, but it would be unsafe for you to be in that environment. So as a new pilot, six miles an hour is my cutoff in the mountains. Now flatlands, it's eight miles an hour. The reason being is if you think of a state like Florida, that's very flat, or like Kansas, that's very flat, there's not a lot of obstacles for that wind to blow through or blow over and get changed in shape and form and speed like mountains. So you can handle more wind and that wind can be more smooth, meaning eight miles an hour could be perfectly smooth in the flatlands. So I draw that line a little bit higher, meaning if you're in Kansas and it's blowing eight miles an hour, you could fly because it's probably smooth. Now the beach is even higher than the last two. And the reason for this is as wind blows over water, it becomes very smooth. So you can handle 10 miles an hour much easier on the beach because it's gonna be 10 miles an hour of smooth wind. Now I wanna make it clear that this cutoff, six, eight, 10, is not the absolute max that you can handle. It's what I draw the line in the ground, the line in the sand for our students. It is the line I draw where I say, hey, if it is seven in the mountains, you should absolutely not do it. And I make it a big priority that students know this and absolutely follow these guidelines. The reason is there should be no ifs, there should be no gray areas when it comes to weather. There should be no gray areas when it comes to making decisions on when to fly and when not to fly. A student is going to lean into the information that the instructor has passed on to them to make a judgment call on when to fly or not to fly. It is very important that they have good information with lines drawn in the sand and reasons as to why to lean into that information when they're making a decision. So the answer is six, eight, 10. Now, if you're an experienced pilot, that could be different. In fact, it's not six, eight, 10 for me but it should be six, eight, 10 for a new pilot. 
Okay, so now the next thing is Gus. We talked about 6, 8, 10, but we didn't talk about the Gus. So you pull up your phone and it's blowing five miles an hour. Gusting, how much do I let you? Five miles an hour more. So if it is six gusting 11, that is the max that you should be flying in in the mountains. If it is eight gusting 13, that is the max you should be flying in in the mountains. If it is 10 gusting 15, that is the max you should be flying in, or did I say mountains? I meant flatlands. It is the max you should be flying in on the beach. Five miles an hour more than the wind speed. The reason for this is because as the gust to wind ratio increases, meaning you have four gusting 12, four gusting 17, as that spread gets wider, the turbulence and the smoothness of that air gets worse. It gets more and more bumpy. It becomes more and more unpleasant to be in. The closer together those numbers are, the smoother the air is going to be. The further those numbers are, the rougher the air is going to be. Now, we as paramotor pilots do not want to be in a lot of turbulence, especially new pilots. You want to be in smooth conditions. You want to be flying when it's comfortable so that you can be focused on the other things. You don't want to be flying when it's turbulent because that could be dangerous for you if you're a new pilot. So we want that spread to be really close. You want six gusting eight miles an hour. You want three gusting four miles an hour. You want that spread to be close together. If it's more than five miles an hour, generally for a beginner pilot, I would recommend not flying. Now, of course, as an experienced pilot, that's a different story, but as a beginner pilot, it's a big deal that that spread is really close. So no more than five miles an hour greater than the speed of the wind. Now, I want to emphasize one more time the importance of the instructor's job to draw the line in the sand for their students. This is something we take really serious at Backcountry PPG, and our ground school is extremely extensive in drawing the lines and explaining why those lines are in the sand. And yes, we take it very far onto the safe side. We always err on the safe side, and we will continue to do so because it's important for the pilot's life. The reason it's so important that you have that line is because as a new pilot ventures into the world of flying paramotors, every decision they make, they are going to lean into the information that their instructor passed on to them to make their judgment call. Meaning a student of ours is going to lean into the information we gave them on to weather to make a decision on whether to fly in those weather conditions or not to fly in those weather conditions. That is a big deal, and we take that very serious. I do not want any of my students to be flying in any conditions that's unsafe for them, and the reason they would be is because they don't know any better. Or if they do, they're just deciding to fly, which that we can't control, but the knowing any better, we can. That is why I make it a big deal to draw those lines in the sand, repeat that information, review that information and continue to drill into their brains that information on all things, not just weather, weather, reserves, F FAR 103, airspace, risk management, motor out awareness, and plenty of other topics we discuss at length because it's important that that information gets passed on to the students. Now, if you are interested in learning how to fly a paramotor, we do run a 10 day beginner training course in Salt Lake City, Utah. In 2023, we trained 101 students alone. This year in 2024, we're looking to train even more. We've got classes coming up in May with space available at the time of filming this. And we have class about every single month. Visit backcountryppg.com to learn more about our training classes. And we hope to see you there soon. If not, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, comment down below what you think. My name is Trevor Steele, and I will see you all in the next video.